Hello guys and welcome back to Engineering Hack, where we try to solve engineering problems in a way that's hopefully easy to understand. Today we're doing a question that was dropped in the comments by Samir and he asked us to help him out. So his question reads like so, a closed ridge container with a volume of 0.2 meters cubes initially contains a mixture of saturated water vapor at a pressure of 100 kilopascals with a quality of 50%. Heat is added to the system until it reaches 200 kilopascals. Sketch the diagram in a PV and TV diagrams and determine the temperature of each state, the mass of vapor present at each state, and if the heating is continued, determine the pressure at which the container holds only saturated temperature. So we have initially two states, right? The first one, well, we have water. Let's start with the basics, right? We have, we're talking about water. And we have a 0.2 meters cubed container. Now we have that rigid container worded there, which is super important because it means that no matter what happens, this is not going to be a piston container, but instead a container that's going to have 0.2 meters cubed no matter what. Right? Also a closed container, meaning there's no mass entering or leaving. Um, and we, in our first state, we have a saturated vapor. So we have a saturated vapor with a quality of 50%, right? So we can be sure that the first state contains both saturated liquid and saturated vapor. That's amazing, right? So the first state is ready to go. The second state, now that we know this, um, this uh, volume thing here, we also know it's at 200 kilopascals. So we need, we have everything we need to be able to calculate uh, uh, where we are in the second state, right? Because we can know the specific volume, right? Given the first state, and we also know the pressure. So all good there. So let's start with the first one. What is the uh, temperature of each state? And let's draw the diagram, PV diagram of these states. I'm going to call this guy state one. And I'm going to call this guy state two. Okay. Now the first state, well, actually, let me do this. Let me do a, a diagram. Let me get the blue lines going. Okay. So let's draw what will be a PV diagram of this. A PV diagram and TV diagram. So P stands for pressure, T stands for temperature, V stands for specific volume. Right? And I know already kind of what it's going to look like. Right? We know we have already enough information to know, have an idea of what this will look like. Why? Because we are going to be in the middle, right? Because it's 50%. That's state one. So we're sure about that. And that's going to be obviously the case here too. We're going to be in the middle of the dome. And as we go, as we give heat, right? As we're giving heat to the system, what's going to happen is we're going to be increasing the pressure, right? So we're going to be increasing the pressure and the temperature, but we will not be changing the specific volume. Why? Because the temperature, sorry, the volume is not changing. It's a rigid container, right? So we're going to be shooting straight up, straight up. Let's keep the, the blue going. Straight up, straight up, straight up. Now, I'm not sure whether we're going to stop here, here, or here, right? In other words, I'm not sure whether we're going to stop inside the dome still, if we're going to be outside the dome, or if we're going to be right on the saturation line, right? I don't know that. We don't, we don't have enough information about the second state. But we can find out because we have all the data needed to be able to come to that conclusion, right? If it's a superheated state, then we know we'll be here. If it's right on the saturation line of saturation vapor, we're going to be there. If it's still a mixture, it's going to be here. So we can go there and find out, and then our um, PV and TV diagram are going to be easy to finish. The other thing I can do is I can say this is 100 kilopascals, and I can say this, I don't know the temperature yet. Okay, so this is all I can see. So let's go ahead and find out what is going on in the second state. And let's grab what is temperature one and um, temperature two. For temperature one, it's going to be super easy, right? I'm just going to go into my saturated water table. I'm going to go to the pressure table at 100 kilopascals. And I'm going to see what's the temperature of the saturated um, saturated temperature, right? That's, that's super easy. So this is still temperature table, pressure table. Here we are. I'm going to look at 100. Uh, 100. Here we are. Why is this so? blurry. 
100 and the temperature is 99.61 so that was super easy t1 is t1 is 99.61 right what about the second state well i know the second state is at a pressure of 200 so i know i'm going to be here somewhere but i don't know, know whether i'm going to be if this is the right table or not to do that i need another property I need a second property and what it can do is it can grab the specific volume because i know specific volume of this guy here will be the same as this guy here right so i just need to calculate specific volume and i know the specific volume is going to be a combination between the saturated liquid more specifically 50 percent and the saturated vapor 50 percent of each so it's going to be 50 percent of uh not 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 10 43 and 50 percent of 1.6 so all right some somewhere close to uh, 0.8 so let's do that quick real quick what is the specific volume of state one well that's going to be 50 percent of 1 2 10 uh what was the one 10 43 plus 50 percent of 1.6941 and this gives me a specific volume of 0.8475. And that's meters cubed per kilogram. So what do I need to do now? Well, I need to go to the pressure of 200 and check whether this number here is within the liquid and vapor saturated uh, specific volumes or above the one for the vapor right if it's above then we know it's a preheated state if it's within we know it is a saturated liquid and so this is the value we're looking for saturated vapor right saturated vapor of the state with 200 kilopascals and we see it's 0.88 we found that we are at 0.84 right so therefore we have not crossed this boundary we're not above we don't have a, a volume that's greater than the saturation uh greater in indicating we're inside a superheated state instead we are in the saturated mixture okay so we have not crossed the we have not crossed the line right so my conclusion from that is where are we where are we here my conclusion is that this is still a saturated mixture okay and that allows me to say okay so we have not crossed the boundary so we're not here we're not there we are somewhere here inside the dome right and the pressure is 200 kilopascals right so boom boom pv diagram is complete well tv diagram well we found the the first temperature right we found the first temperature to be 99 99.61 celsius that was easy and now you know the second one is not up there so it's going to be somewhere inside the dome so somewhere here and it's easy for us to find the temperature T2 because we just need to go there where we had the saturation temperature. Look at the temperature, uh, the saturation table, sorry. So not this one, where were we? This one here, and the temperature is 120.21 degrees Celsius. So easy peasy, 120.21, 120.21. There you go, we have T1, we have T2, we have PV diagram, we have TV diagram. Beautiful. All right. So, what is next? Next up is what are the masses, right? What are the masses we need to know? And then what is the, forget the other one, uh, mass of vapor present in each state and the heating, if the heating is continued. All right. So, let's find out the masses first. So, we know that our specific volume is our volume divided by the mass by definition right it's just meters cubed per kilogram so if i want the mass all i need to do is take the volume and divide by the specific volume correct in this case we know the volume is 0.2 meters cubed and this guy is we calculated to be point eight four seven five eight four seven five and then just keep in mind the units we have here so we're going to end up with kilograms right and this turns out to be 0 0.23 0 0.23 
598 keeps going so let's just stop it there and this is the total mass right this is the total mass of water we have in there and we know we have it's a it's a 50 50 split on the first stage so in state one the mass of vapor is just 50 percent of the total mass right so 50 percent of the of the 20 the point 23 five nine etc and this is approximately 0.118 kilograms. Okay, so this is the amount of vapor that we have in that state. So what about the second one? Well, for the second state, I don't know the quality, I don't know the split, right? I don't know the split. I don't know how much I have of vapor, how much I have of liquid. Not yet, anyways. I can find out that out by calculating the quality, which is a specific volume and the one for the liquid divided by the one for the vapor and the one for the liquid okay so i need to i have this guy already that's that was uh calculated before that's a four point oh, sorry 84 90, 75. now the liquid and the vapor we can grab off the table and do this math all right so let's go down back to the table here we are so the values that we're after are point not not 1061 and the other one is point 88578 so, and note that you know we're really close to the border there we're close to the border and we're almost reaching a saturation limit okay so this guy here is going here and this guy here is going here and we're doubling that here too okay and what does that give us 90 well 0.9567 so 95.67 so out of all that mass that we found um the what was it the total mass of 0.2359 the majority of it the vast majority about 95 percent is vapor right and that means that if we want to find what is the mass of vapor, you just take the 95.67 and multiply it by the 0 0.2359 kilograms, which renders about 22, 2256. So not the vast majority, 57 even. A good chunk of that. Uh, point twenty three, right? And this is the amount of mass in state number two. Okay, so that's part uh, B. Now for part C, and the last part is asking us. I don't remember the question. Uh, if the heating continued, determine the pressure at which the container hold only saturated temperature. Only saturated. Only saturated. This is probably not temperature. This is probably only saturated vapor. That that makes sense makes sense saturated temperatures like two asking for two things so if the heating is continued determine the pressure at which the container can hold only saturated vapor okay and the reason for that that question makes sense because we're very close to the border right like we talked about like you know we're almost there and our um saturate our our uh, specific volume is 0.84 and we are at 0.88 and note that the next one down let me get rid of this the next one down is already 79 right so that means that the maximum uh the maximum pressure that they're talking about there is somewhere between these two values between the 200 and the 225 okay and what we can do there is we can do an interpolation quick interpolation to find out what that pressure is okay because we are again we are at point 84 so we need to find what at what um pressure is equivalent to the 0.84 that we found in our calculation for the specific volume, right? So in other words, what we need is to do 200 is equivalent to 0 0.88578 and 225 is equivalent to 0 0.79329. And the question there is, what is part C 
Here it is. Yeah, so these two guys are equivalent. And the question is, what's the pressure that is equivalent to the 80 for 75? To the 80 for 75. And what is that pressure? And for that, we can do interpolation and then find out what is that, that pressure. And we talked all about interpolation in this channel several times, so you can check out previous videos here that talk, show you how to do it. But if we interpolate here, what we get is that the pressure at which this would happen it would become saturated vapor. If we keep even heat to that system is about 210. I got 210.347, but let's just do about 310 kilopascals, right? So once, if we keep give, given, um, this goes back to the idea on our here, here, right? We see that we we started far away from the from the saturation line, but then we got gave more energy and we stopped here. If we keep given energy, we're gonna hit this space here. We're gonna hit exactly that point at 210. That's what we're saying, right? That's the the question and the answer for part C. So I hope this was useful. I hope they helped you out. If you have any questions, as per usual, just, just leave them down below in the comment section and I'll try, try to address them. If you have other questions that you want uh, to solve, to see, you know, solve in this channel, you can put them down, down there too. Um, if this video helped you out, consider giving a like and we'll talk soon.